Um, yeah, kind of. I guess it's hard to know. Um, sort of expect to chase 138 every day of the week um, and then you see the ball sort of turning, stopping, keeping low, reverse swinging and you know that they've got um, Malinga and Hereafter are two excellent bowlers on surfaces like that and um, and you know that 130-odd is a gr- is a lot bigger total than uh, than what it suggests but um, in the end, yeah, you probably still get out of jail. I guess on the flip side, a lot of composure shown there at the end and under pretty trying circumstances. Yeah, there was composure. There was um, a lack of composure at times as well. But um, I guess that's, uh, you know, they're not recognised batsmen, um, some of the guys who played some hands today, but they are experienced players who have a, a good ability with the bat as well um, and who are reasonably calm in some, in, uh, I guess, uh, pressure situations. And I thought we saw today um, Nathan's innings was obviously, obviously uh, brilliant. I thought he struck the ball as well as what anyone else did on that surface. Um, and obviously Tim as well, showing us some nice composure there towards the end too. Yeah, just quite keen to get your uh, your second most anxious moment there, Brendan, perhaps other than the final over. The second most yeah. anxious? Yeah, where, where, where do you feel the most nervous out there with the, that, that chase? Uh, I think once you get out, that's when you start to to get a little bit, uh, a little bit twitchy. Um, I think while you're out there and you've you can actually help influence the situation. Your nerves aren't too bad, but it's once you, you get back in the change room and, you, and you're sort of watching things unfold. So I think once Nathan got out, that was probably um, when things got a little bit, a little bit nervy. Um, but then uh, obviously uh, once uh, that run out happened as well, that was uh, that was probably when I was nervous. Once we got down to the last few runs, it wasn't too bad because I knew that Tim had faced a lot of balls against Malinga. He's obviously one of those sorts of guys that once you've faced him for a period, he becomes a touch easier. So I think got a little bit more composed towards the end, but I wouldn't say I was, I was calm. Brendan, it's such a short, sort of truncated tournament. Um, you know, only just one wicket in it, but how important is it to get that win and how tough would it have been on the flip side if you'd gone down? Yeah, incredibly valuable. And uh, I mentioned to Nathan out, at the, uh, out on the field afterwards, actually, that... I think it would have been quite a tough one to come back from um, if we hadn't have got across the line in this. So it's it's hugely important. And whilst it wasn't as clinical as what we'd like with bat in hand, um, we still managed to to fall across the line, I guess. And the points are incredibly valuable, um, and especially against a team as dangerous as Sri Lanka in these conditions, where they win the toss and obviously they knew that the the pitch is going to dry out a touch as well, and their bowlers were going to come into effect. So I think when you throw all that stuff into the mix um, and to to fall across the line like we did is very, very valuable for us moving forward in this tournament. And Dan Vittori, your thoughts on his sort of comeback and uh, and, and how is he, because he did look a bit ginger in the field at times. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good for Dan, actually. Um, but, yeah, he uh, he his wicket of um, Jay Wardner was a huge wicket for us, and I think there was some, some really good prep and planning from us as well. It was, uh, it was a huge moment in the game um, where we were able to... We just, uh, dismiss one of the most experienced players um, through a guy as good as what Dan is um, with the ball slide not sliding through him. So I thought he he was valuable from that point of view but also as other overs he asked a lot of questions and certainly did a, a valuable role for us and I think he'll be okay for the next few games. He's, he's certainly no spring chicken in the field but there's a couple of us which aren't, uh, aren't quite what we used to be in the field as well. Uh, Brendan, uh, I'm sure you practice facing slow Yorkers. It's become quite routine for bowlers to do that. But how do you face a slow Yorker bowled with that kind of action? Yeah, that's you do sort of prepare for um, the death bowling where you're facing Yorkers and slow balls and slow ball bounces, etc. Um, but Lasith is a completely different uh, proposition altogether. And um, yeah, he, I thought he bowled brilliantly today, and and uh, and it's probably unlucky not to come out on the right side of the result, but. Um, it's hard to, I guess, prepare for that sort of um, bowling because once he executes it as well as what he does, um, well, he's, he's the best in the world at it. So um, we're just thankful that even as good as he was today, we still managed to get the win. Nathan, you know, take the approach of being positive out there. Is that your mindset trying <coughs> to get there, basically? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I thought, obviously, uh, it wasn't a massive total, so it was just a matter of us trying to get a partnership together and um, trying to be as confident as I could and, and help Brennan out and by, by scoring some runs as well and not just leaving it up to him. So uh, it, was, it was good to put a partnership on together. Unfortunately, we weren't able to finish it off between the two of us, which would have been, would have been nice and a lot more relieving for everyone else. But um, we, we got across the line in the end, so that, that's the most important thing.
Nathan, can you take us through some of your um, midweek conversations there, perhaps? Because it's arguably the most important partnership during the game. Without the swear words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, a version. Yeah, there's a little bit going on, but uh, uh, we're we're actually quite composed, really. Uh, it was it was just just a matter of us just trying to bat, and, and there was a lot of right. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep working, man. You uh, as much as we can together, and keep chipping it away. And and really, that was about it. Because when you if we batted ten or fifteen overs, we could kill the game off. Uh, I think we might have bat better 10 or so overs together and, and probably not that extra five that we might have needed to finish the game off. Brendan, I know the, the dust has just settled on this, but Australia on Wednesday, um, first of all, what did you make of their performance the other day and um, what, do you, what are your confidence levels like after this? Um, yeah, I think let this one sink in a bit and uh, and then sort of really turn our attentions to, to Australia, but, um, but we know that they are a very good team, and whilst they may not have been playing as as well as what they um, are capable of, uh, we know that they're still a dangerous dangerous proposition, and we're going to make sure we get a, a firm read on what the pitch is going to be like as well. Um, make sure we're well planned and, and well prepared for that, um, and uh, and hopefully, you know, if we uh, we can tidy up a couple of those loose areas that we showed today with the bat and replicate this, the outstanding bowling and fielding which we showed as well. And if we do that, um, give ourselves a live chance against Australia. Uh, Brendan, how would you rate that innings? I mean, perhaps not as razzle dazzle as usual, but probably you would rate it up quite highly in terms of your one-day cricket. My innings, yeah, yeah, across yeah. The number, but. Yeah, it was an interesting one. It was sort of, um, I think, when you first came out to bat, um, sort of got the pace of it reasonably um, quickly, uh, and then once we lost a couple of wickets, um, almost tried to just assess the situation and know that. If we can take it as deep as possible, then um, then we're going to give ourselves the best opportunity. And um, I thought the way Nathan came out and and then hit the ball took well all the pressure off me. It meant that I could just pretty much keep uh, keep out the ball as much as possible and just take it over. And knowing that if he got out, was, we we're still going to have established batsmen at the crease. And that was sort of some of the discussions we're having as well. How I'd rate it. Um, Any time you win and make some sort of contribution, um, it's nice, but certainly not my, not my most fluent one. But uh, but I'll take it in a winning environment, uh, winning uh, cause. Just getting back to Dan again. I mean, is it, is it tempting to perhaps come and rest on Wednesday and keep him fresh for England, or are you I'm confident he'll play both games? Uh, again, it's probably a bit early. Um, sort of just want to keep assessing Dan as we go through, knowing how valuable he is to our setup as well, and knowing that the wicket when we get back here is likely to be similar to what we've, we've found today. I think that's where our assessment of the wicket that we're going to play at Edge, edge Baston is is very important. Um, if it isn't going to have the same, I guess, grip or, or stop or turn as what we've seen here, um, then we've got to marry up the risk of playing someone like Dan. Um, knowing that knowing that you've still got some valuable members in the squad who could fill that void, um, but we've just got to wait and see. There's all that stuff we'll have to talk about and and speak to Dan about it as well and see how he's pulled up after uh, after his 30 odd overs in the park as well. Brendan, just quickly on the batting, um, obviously you you know you had three pretty solid performances against England, but do you write this off as a bit of a one-off or do you think there is still some issues in the batting order? Um, no, I don't. I don't think there's issues in the batting order. I, I think we've got a, a good mix of stroke makers and uh, and I guess for want of a bit of turn craft players, um, and they're not always going to come off. But I think we're starting to get some familiarity about our, our batting as well in, in this form of the game. And I, I think today's wicket was incredibly difficult wicket to bat on, and I think that um, you got to put that in the mix as well. And, and sort of say that uh, that guys weren't maybe as fluent as what they would, would have liked or, or made as significant scores as what they would have liked because of the score. But I sort of flip it over the other side and say that's why we did such a good job with the ball. We knew, made an early assessment in that game that 170, 180 was going to be incredibly tough to chase. So we had to keep attacking with the ball and the guys were brilliant at that, I thought. And um, you know, I, th I think that's probably the winning of the game is, is the guys kept attacking and kept taking wickets and that made it easier for our batting lineup to be able to fall across the line. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.